All right, guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about Parkinson's medications. So um, you gotta know all of them. And I'd say you, you gotta know the mechanism and you gotta know the side effects of the medications. And I think this video should cover pretty much all of it. So hope you like the video. All right, guys, so the question reads, which of the following best describes the mechanism of this medication? It reads, a 58-year-old Caucasian male presents for examination after concerns from family of falling and tremors. He is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. The man has started on levodopa carbidopa. Which of the following best describes the mechanism of this medication? Is it A, improves tremor and rigidity by blocking acetylcholine? Is it B, increases release of dopamine from substantia nigra? Is it C, dopamine agonist? Is it D, increases dopamine in the brain by preventing breakdown in the peripheral blood vessels? Or is it E, dopamine antagonist? Well, first of all, you know, if we know we're in Parkinson's, you know, Parkinson's basically, uh, we got to be thinking decrease in dopamine. And what part of the brain do we typically associate Parkinson's decrease with? And that's going to be the substantia uh, nigra. Okay, so our, so our goal with Parkinson's, you know, one of the goals is going to be we got to get the dopamine levels back up. Okay, so... How do we do that? Well, let's kind of think about this. If we're in the brain, okay, and we're just gonna draw a neuron, um, a neuron in the brain here the best we can, and it's gonna go down, and at the end, this neuron, if we're in a substantia nigra, should release dopamine, correct? It should really release dopamine, and then go, there should be a receptor that's gonna, in, that's gonna want that dopamine. But with Parkinson's, obviously, it's a decrease. There's, the dopamine's just not there for whatever reason, okay? Now, to give a medication that's going to hopefully increase the dopamine in the brain, we got to be aware of this thing called the blood-brain barrier, okay? Blood-brain barrier. Now, the problem with dopamine, you know, say, say you just want to give them dopamine. The problem with dopamine is... It doesn't like, it can't cross that blood-brain barrier, right? It can't, it can't go through it. So we got to give it in the form of L-DOPA, okay? Now, L-DOPA can get, can get transported across the, uh, uh, the blood-brain barrier and then get, then get made into dopamine, right? And if you remember when we did the uh, biochemistry, we always talked about phenylalanine makes tyrosine, which makes uh, L-DOPA, which makes DOPA, norp norepinephrine, epinephrine, right? And then the step from L-DOPA to dopamine is going to be through dopamine decarboxylase, okay? And so what we want to do is we don't want the L-DOPA to go to dopamine uh, right away in, in here, right? Because if we if it if it turns into dopamine here, it won't cross the blood brain barrier. So we want this L dopa to hang around a lot longer, right? Because here's out in the, in the periphery before it gets into the brain per se. So what do we do? We give carbidopa. We give carbidopa. Now what, what's the role of carbidopa to prevent L dopa from going to dopamine? It kind of it kind of reduces that you know reduces that from occurring. So the longer it stays L-dopa, then it more can get across the blood-brain barrier, go to the brain, and give us the dopamine where it needs to be. Okay, so that's the purpose of L-dopa and carbidopa. So, and we also know that L-dopa can be broken down. Uh, you know, I guess you can do it like that by the monoamine uh, oxidase as well. So, and that's going to be our we're going to say our saligiline and rosagiline, rosagiline, okay? And with those, you know, those, those are our MAOs, but again, you got to watch out for the saligiline, rosagiline, rosagiline because you got to avoid, avoid what? You got to avoid foods high in tyramine, okay? Because why? What do you got to worry about with that? Because of hypertension, hypertensive crisis on that per se, all right? So again, L-dopa can be broken down by a, mo a monoamine and also through uh, the dopamine and also be <laughs> naturally go to dopamine by dopamine decarboxylase. But we, but we want it to hang out longer so it can in the L-dopa form so it can cross the blood-brain barrier. All right, so back to this question, okay? And, you know, basically Parkinson's and if, the, if they're part of started on levodopa, carbidopa, what's the mechanism behind it? Is it A, improves tremor and rigidity by blocking acetylcholine? 
No, this is going to be like for a very, very, very mild uh, form of Parkinson's, maybe where they have like just the tremors, uh, you can give an anticholinergic uh, medication such as, say, benztropine, and, you know, you can kind of decrease the tremor. But you got to watch out what, when you give an anticholinergic to someone who's kind of getting up there, I'm not saying 58 is old, but uh, over time, someone who's getting up to an age, you got to worry about delirium, okay? Delirium, cognition. So uh, improves tremor rigidity by blocking acetylcholine. No, that's an anticholinergic kind of a benztropine. That's not, L, that's not L-dopa. Increases the release of dopamine from the substantia nigra. So basically you could say increases the release of endogenous dopamine from the substantia nigra. You know, that's the role of amantadine, okay? Um, amantadine has this kind of property. Normally we know amantadine as mainly an antiviral uh, for the flu. Uh, but it is, it is open to the discussion. It's basically on a mild form of Parkinson's where the person can't tolerate the anticholinergic, uh, they, you may consider am amantadine. Again, mild forms of the Parkinson's. Dopamine uh, agonist. Well, again, now we're talking about the uh, Pramipexol, and then we're talking about Ropinerol. Those are our, kind of our, our classic ones. And uh, you know, basically these dopamine agonists, there's first generation, second generation, or you can say the ergot versus the non-ergot. But anyways, the ones that you might more commonly test it on, the premipexol and the ropinerol. Uh, ropinerol, they, they use it for restless leg. But again, these are the dopamine uh, agonist, okay? You got to worry about as far as side effects of the premipexol and ropinerol, you know, nausea, um, constipation, headache. And then these, the older school ones, um, the cabergoline and then the bromocryptine, you, you know, these are, the, they call them the um, ergot. You gotta worry about hypotension with those, okay? Is it D, increases dopamine in the brain by preventing breakdown in the peripheral blood vessels? Well, that's kind of what we said. Uh, that's what levodopa carbidopa does. Uh, again, keep it in the L-dopa form, and by doing that, the carbidopa's role is to make sure it doesn't get broken down into dopamine. And then E was dopamine antagonist, and again, that's kind of going against anything Parkinson's is about. You know, heck, this would, this would even make things worse, right? More of a drug-induced Parkinson's if they didn't already have it. Um, and these are basically your anti-psychotics, uh, guys. So your take-home point is, how does levodopa carbidopa work, which is one of those, yeah, usually uh, for for, say, a severe form of Parkinson's. Um, severe form of Parkinson's, depending on what you read, you can use at levodopa, carbidopa, or they use the dopamine uh, agonist. But again, you need a carbidopa to keep it in the L-dopa form so it can cross the blood-brain barrier. All right? This one reads, uh, the question is, which of the following side effects would, be, would the patient be at most risk of experiencing when starting this new medication? Okay. It says a 62-year-old who has diagnosis of Parkinson's is, is brought to his primary care after his family noticed he has been exhibiting stiffness and gait instability. He has been on a dopamine agonist for the past eight years. Okay, dopamine agonist. Uh, which of the following side effects will be the patient at most risk of experiencing when starting this new medication? So this is just another opportunity. Let's just talk about the uh, Parkinson's medications. We got benztropine. We got amantadine, we got uh, premipexol, uh, and I'm not going to say these are all Parkinson's meds, but they, they have to deal with dopamine, okay? And so they could impact, you got to know the, the mechanism of action of these guys, of how they may interact, because if it affects dopamine, it can affect Parkinson's, okay? So we got uh, benztropine and amantadine, we're going to put those in that category up there. We got these guys, the Premipex solver Pinerol. These are going to be our, our second generation dopamine agonist. Cabergoline bromocryptine, we're going to call those our first generation dopamine agonist. And then we have our levodopa carbidopa. Okay, so that's the one we just explained in the last question. And then we're going to have our MAOB. And then our MAOAB, kind of non-selective, okay? And then uh, COMT. These guys uh, can, these guys naturally break down dopamine, but if you have an MAOB inhibitor, okay, inhibitor, 
what are you going to do? And again, it goes back to the, the whole phenylalanine makes tyrosine, L-dopa, dopa, norepinephrine. It can be broken down by these guys, but if you have inhibitors to these, you're going to have more dopamine, right? It, it works backwards. So we have siligiline, rosigiline, okay, um, MAOB. And then we have the uh, MAO, uh, AB, kind of non-selective, uh, phenylzine, phen phenylzine, the transcyclopramine, isocarboxazide, or boxazide, and then as far as COMT, we got the anticapone, okay? And they may be pronounced differently, but that's just how I, how I got them. So these are all medications uh, that can impact you know, can impact the uh, dopamine or Parkinson's. Uh, no, I shouldn't say just dopamine because benztropine, this is just an anticholinergic, right? It's an anticholinergic and that's going to get rid of the tremors. What are my side effects of anticholinergic medications? I got to worry about what? Dry mouth. Amantadine, uh, what does it do? It increases endogenous dopamine, substantia nigra. Um, you use that if the person can't tolerate, and this is, and this is all for mild Parkinson's, okay, real mild Parkinson's, and you use amenadine if they can't tolerate the benztropine, the anticholinergic, because we were worried about delirium. These are my dopamine agonist, okay, Premipex, Halberpenerol, Cabergoline, Bromocryptine. We have the first generation, I think we call this ergot, and then we have the non-ergot, as you might have it pronounced or just seen. These guys, the second generation, um, a little safer on the side effect profile, but the Premipexol and the Repinerol, we got to worry about nausea, um, constipation, headache, okay? For these guys, the old school ones, we got to worry about hypotension, okay? I've seen questions about that. And then, of course, levodopa, carbidopa, uh, what are our side effects? Well, to understand big time on the Parkinson's, you know, we got we to understand dopamine. And dopamine can be in the spectrum, that if I have too little dopamine, okay, if I have low dopamine over here, what do I get? Well, I get Parkinson's, right? I, I, have, I have movement issues, okay? Um, yeah, it, it, it's just Parkinson's, you can't move. Now, if you have too much dopamine, you know, excessive dopamine, that's gonna lead to psychosis. And so hopefully there's a balance in there somewhere. But when someone comes in the door psychotic, what do we give? We give dopamine blockers. What happens if we give too many dopamine blockers or too much or they can't tolerate it? It pushes them into drug-induced Parkinson's. So there should be a balance. But you got to know the, the two extremes so you can kind of understand how dopamine is affected and how the medications might affect this. Uh, because, you know, say you gave someone a bunch of levodopa carbidopa, what, what could be the potential uh, side effect? Well, if I'm, if I'm giving them this and I'm making dopamine, what happens if I give them too much? Or you know, when you're first trialing this, trialing this out, well, you can, it can lead to psychosis. You could give them too much dopamine. And then we have the MAOB, siligiline, residuline. Um, they're going to increase, and all these guys really just worry about nausea, vomiting, um, headache. And then the, these guys are non-selective. Uh, so obviously they could, they, could, they could cause increases in a lot of stuff, including hypertension, um, especially with the whole food and stuff. Uh, but these... Since these are very specific, it's MOOB, this is going to increase dopamine. But then if it's non-selective where it's AB, and if you remember the phenylalanine makes tyrosine, makes L-dopa-dopa -dopa and all that stuff, you, you could be increasing um, not only dopamine, but with these medications, you're going to increase potentially serotonin and norepinephrine. And so you can tell this, this could have an, an issue with blood pressure. And if you have too much of this kind of stuff, the serotonin, you could have what? Serotonin syndrome. And then of course, COMT again, uh, medication, COMT blocker. Um, and these are MAO inhibitors, MAOB inhibitors, but a COMT like inhibitor is gonna be enticpone. Okay. Now back to this question. Uh, which of the following side effects would be the patient at most risk of experience when starting this new medication? It's a dopamine agonist. So we're in this category and um, you know, accord, again, here I said, yeah, I seen a question like that. Yep, because I, I wrote it. Um, anyways, the correct answer is going to be hypotension. Dopamine agonist, I think the old school, cabergoline, bromocryptine, the old ones, hypotension. Agitation is just, um, again, I might go with that one. 
anything that's going to increase dopamine has potential for this. But when it comes to dopamine agonists, or it's mainly known for the hypotension, memory loss. I'm going. I'd be going with the anticholinergic. Incontinence. I don't know. Urinary retention. I would go with benzotropine. Not so much the incontinence or anything here. Increased rigidity. Uh, that's if you gave someone more of a, a dopamine blocker and was going in the other direction. So in this one, the only answer, the correct answer is going to be B, hypotension. All right, guys, make sure you know these medications for Parkinson's and then especially know the mechanism uh, for L-dopa, carbidopa, and the purpose of that it prevents the breakdown in the peripheral tissues of the L-dopa. Hope it was helpful, guys.